That's my like <laughs> the stupidest. Hey everyone, it's Crystal, and today I have Rico with me, Hello. and we did a buddy read on the book called Monstrous Beauty. Now this book is by Elizabeth Fama. Fama? Yes. Fama. She follows me on Twitter now. Oh, she does? Yes. Oh, that's exciting. What, well, how did you even find it? Did you? I, I found her on Twitter and was like, hey, I really love this book. And she's like, I'll follow you. <laughs> she apparently <laughs> thinks I'm cool. And that's, that's cool. That's awesome. Anyways, um, I've known Rika for actually a number of years through the different geek conventions and stuff that we do. And she actually went to school for being a librarian. And we've been wanting to do a uh, buddy read for a while. And what was it? A couple weeks ago, you were like, hey, why don't we finally do that? And I went, sure. And this was one of the books that you suggested, and it was a lot of fun to read. So we'll just go ahead, give you a little bit of a review on it today, and just keep watching. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoy watching our silliness take hold, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You have. I do have, have a note. You have tons of notes there. So what we're going to be really good at making sure that we hit all the important points of this book. 1872. Yeah. Oh, they're little Finding Nemo's. Look at that. Yes. They're adorable. Finding Dory, because there's a whale shark. Oh, I didn't. That's very important. I guess. I guess that is important. <laughs> um, my copy of this was in a digital format. I got it downloaded from the library. Yay, libraries! And I was able to read it, which was great, but I missed out on some of the awesome stuff that came with this book. Some of the illustrations. All the, the cover images inside and the, the title page. And then this, these guys back here. They're all gorgeous. And they're pages from the journal one of the characters keeps during the book. So it's really cool. Yeah. So let's get into the book a little bit. Now this is a story, I'm going to give you a hint, it's about mermaids. Okay, that was a pretty big hint. But this story actually is not your normal Little Mermaid sort no, of story. It's closer, I don't want to say horror, but it's like mystery horror. like. A little more, I don't want to say advanced reading, but a little spookier than your normal mermaids. Really? Like. You thought this was horror? No, but just closer, like it's not like, we're singing in the ocean. <laughs> you know, it's like, we're mermaids and we eat, you know, clams. <laughs> it actually takes place in two different time periods. You hear um, from both parts because they are interwoven. And it's really interesting, the main character's name, well, one of the main character's names is Ezra, and that actually is the main guy character in the older time. What year did we say it's that was? 1872. Yes, because you have the little post-it note here. Yeah. And you took notes because I don't take notes. Um, I'm a librarian, it happens. It does! Um, <laughs> that's why we're friends. But. <laughs> Ezra runs and falls in love with this girl that I can't pronounce her name, but she goes by Sarah after she... Sirenka, I think. Okay. That's the way I was reading it. See, this is where we get into the whole debate of is it really that big of a deal how you pronounce no. a name? No. Nobody knew how to pronounce Hermione until the movies came out. We're just That's being true. honest. In America, we don't understand those names. But there are lots of really weird ones in here, too. Really old fashioned -y ones. And then you get to the second part of the story where the main character is a female called Hester. And this is modern time, I would say. It's supposed to take place yeah, around. Present ish. Yeah, around this time. And to have someone, a teenager named Hester, is. It kind of threw me off a little bit, I'll, I'll admit, when I was first reading the book. Because um, the Scarlet Letter is the only other book I know of <laughs> that uses that. I only know old biddies that are like cranky and they're like, you stay off my lawn, um, named Hester. So to read a book that had a teenage girl named Hester kind of threw me for a little bit, but eventually I got into it. Even though while they were flipping back and forth between time periods when I would read Hester, I was like, oh, is this the older one? No, remember, I know it's an old timey name. 
but it's modern. To be honest, I kept forgetting what time period it was. Because when I first started reading it, I didn't realize there were two time periods. And it's written at the top in 1972, whatever, present day time. Did it like, say 1972? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's, it no. showed the dates for every 1872. What did I say? Seven. You said 1972. We were getting into disco. The older story, and we're not going to give any spoilers, talks about Ezra, who is a college kid who ends up having to go back home, but his passion is marine biology, I yes. believe. And he lives on the coast, so he goes down to the shore one day and is researching all the different life that are in these tidal pools and all of a sudden runs across this gorgeous woman who is a mermaid and they fall in love and yada yada. And the second part of the story, the one that's in present day, actually has to do with Hester re-meeting Ezra. And you're like, how does that work? Is that the same guy? They all of a sudden have this magnetism where they don't under Hester doesn't understand her draw to Ezra, and it progresses in a way that kind of shocked me a little bit. I was not expecting that twist for what was going on. You're giving me funny Just face. I did not expect her to all of a sudden go and I can't give away spoilers, but oh my god, when she went to the place and had to experience the thing and then had to figure out how to get away from the thing, I mean, oh my god, do you understand what I'm talking <laughs> yes, about? They don't, yes. but I do. Oh my god. You, this story's about the sea and being along the sea in, in Plymouth, I don't know if you said that, but Plymouth area, the whole story, and um, just all the sea imagery is just very striking and it's I want to say dingy, but like really yes. dark and, and grimy almost, mm -hmm. like the way it's written. It's, it's not sparkly. No, no, no. Very tactile, like you could feel the wind beating on your face. And the the rain. Waves. Lots of rain. Tons of rain. Lots of rain happened <laughs> in this. But no, it's, it's done third person. And the writing style did throw me off a little bit, bouncing between the two centuries, we're going to call it centuries, um, between the 1870 blah 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 and the modern blah blah blah. So like you said before where you had a hard time redirecting your brain to figure out which plot line you were on, I kind of had the same thing going on. Eventually I got into it. I think honestly, I think it was because of Hester. The name Hester is an older name and it threw me. It threw me. I could not keep up with that being the modern name. Like, I was expecting Sarah to be the modern version and in the modern plot line and Hester to be the older plot line. So that threw me for a loop. But this is a standalone book, so don't feel like you have to devote a whole bunch of effort to getting to the finale of this. It did a really good job rounding out the whole story. It didn't feel like, to me anyways, that there was a po point where it was cutting it short or being like, oh, we should wrap this up or like some other books where they decided they're gonna be, kitten, move, <laughs> no, I'm filming. Go away, I love you. This is more of an adult literature. It's not young adult. It does use some. I disagree with you. Really? I do. Why? I think it's it's about it. I know this isn't the general with like with a young adult. It's about young adults and not necessarily for young adults. But I feel like young adults the the emotions in this book are very. I mean, you're it's a young adult who's talking to you and who's feeling these things. She's not talking to you, she's a third person. Anyway, she's feeling these feelings, and you, as a teenager, I definitely think you could connect with her on that level. Okay. And, okay. like, experience that with her. I, and I, I don't think anything's off limits to young adults. No, no, no. And we're not trying to put young adult in a box. But where I was coming from on this is some of the verbiage and some of the bigger concepts that came up. 
I felt were a little bit more adult than what I would put in the young adult section. So there were words that were put in here that most, and when I think young adult, let me explain, I think more teenager. I don't think 20s. And that's new adult. Yes, that's, I didn't know there was a new adult sort of <laughs> it's thing. It's real. Oh, okay. Um, and, and YouTube, we love our young adult books, but I didn't feel like it fit in that teen category. She was older, and she didn't necessarily... Kitten! No. That's my tripod. No. But, yeah, she was a little bit younger, and she was going through innocent feelings, which I would associate with a young adult, but there were other things that they were going through, and with the depth of some of Sarah's discoveries and decisions and emotions, or lack thereof at times, I felt that was more in the regular adult category. But here again. As a 17 year old gave this book to me and she had read it and loved it, so that's where I'm coming from. <laughs> I don't know where she got it, but... Well, and and I heard about <laughs> it from you! <laughs> Overall, though, I would say I gave this book three out of five stars, and if you're familiar with the Good Raids reading, or Good, Good Raids, Good Raids reading, Good Reads rating, that's what I meant. That, 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 okay. that, that, that. Um, it goes, I didn't like it, it was okay, I liked it. I really liked it. It was amazing. So I liked it. I wouldn't say that I really liked it just because I'm not a mermaid person and I think that's part of my own sort of hang up because when I was a little girl growing up everybody because I'm a natural redhead equated me to Ariel and I wanted nothing to do with a moody mermaid. Mm. So it's not a book that I would normally reach for. I liked it. I liked it. It was good. And so I, I gave it three out of five stars. I I loved it. I couldn't I could put it down, but <laughs> as long as it took me to read, I really enjoyed it. So. What would you have rated it? I said I already said like publicly that I loved it. So five. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I mean I'm following the author on Twitter and she's following me, so I'm like Which is adorable. It is so adorable. I, you, I'm I love, a total fangirl for this book. I love when you can make that connection with authors and they reciprocate it, it back. Well, let us know if you've read the book, what you thought of it as well. Go ahead and comment below. Give us a big old thumbs up and follow us on, and I say us, but... Her. Digital development. <laughs> on... Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, I have my